Hello, this is Watch All About with another watch review, and it's, in this review we're looking at a, a brand new release from Hastings & Co. This is the Heritage range, which is uh, now on Kickstarter, we're talking about the, the middle of February 2016. So it's, uh, it's just been launched on Kickstarter uh, for an uh, excellent price of, of £130 uh, is the early bird special. Uh, next margin up is £145 and then the next level up from that is £160. So in every instance the price is pretty fantastic really. It's a, a Canadian Canadian brand, Heritage, Heritage & Co. So it's actually priced in Canadian dollars so it starts at uh, 260 Canadian dollars which is uh, 190 US dollars. So um, let's talk about the watch and see, uh, you know, discuss how uh, how good it is for for the price because obviously starting at 130 pounds it's not a lot of money um, so let's see uh, if it's uh, if it's any good so first first thing is worth mentioning is that it is an automatic uh, watch uh, for this kind of price you know you're not likely to, to see too many automatics especially being that this has a sapphire crystal as well um, looking at the size it's a, a very nice reasonable size for the uh, the smart kind of uh, watch that it is. If I just put it on. Okay, so I'm a uh, seven and a quarter inch wrist and uh, this uh, uh, Hastings & Co Heritage has a 40 mil diameter uh, and a height of only 11 mil and a lug to lug length of 45 mil. So 40 mil diameter, in my opinion, uh, it's a perfect uh, perfect diameter uh, you know it's not quite as small as the vintage style watches uh, and it's not too large to you know to over be overbearing or overpowering so I really think it's a it's a really good size um, for for my personal taste and my personal uh, wrist I think it is uh, the height of 11 mil is a is a great height as well very thin uh, considering it's got you know a, an automatic movement and it's good to see that they've uh, they've kept this to heart Look to look length might be a little bit long uh, for some, uh, but for me, uh, I find it perfectly uh, suitable and I don't have any complaints uh, in that regard. Weight wise, uh, it's 78 grams, so again, you know, quite lightweight, quite comfortable on the wrist. It's good for a, a smart watch. Um, and then we have um, a 20 mil lug width. Uh, for the leather strap, the, the, the strap is uh, an Italian calf skin, which is uh, very nice and thin, uh, very nice and um, sorry, uh, comfortable and decent quality. Um, so the movement, this movement in uh, this very watch is the Miyota 9015. Now that's actually going to be a stretch goal. So the um, the what uh, the movement that. Um, you know the the default movement that, that Hastings have uh, gone for is the eight two one five, which is uh, still a very good movement. It's just the the, the key um, difference is that it's not uh, high beat, so it's the uh, twenty one point six thousand beats per hour, which is six ticks a second, rather than the nine zero one five, which is eight ticks a second. So obviously, um, you know, some people may uh, think that's a sh that's a shame, but when you consider the price of one hundred thirty pounds. It's still very very good value for money. I'm just wondering what um, the price would have been if they just opted for 90, the 9015 straight out. You know, even if it was more towards the 200 pound mark, it still would have been an excellent value, I, I think. So uh, so yeah, there we go. So the 8, 8215 initially, and then hopefully uh, if they get enough backers, they'll uh, pop the 9015 within it, which would be uh, quite incredible, really. You get a 24 months warranty as well, which is pretty cool. Um, and then the presentation box is also really nice. I don't have it with me right now, but check the uh, the written review because uh, I've got some pictures of that uh, in there. So that's a really nice touch as well. It's it's decent quality, uh, and uh, you know, for again for the price of a watch, it's something that you wouldn't really uh, expect. So uh, let's look into the watch in a little bit more detail then. So let's talk about the dial. So uh, as you can see, this is the, the black version with the rose gold uh, plated case. Uh, the, the dial, the black dial is quite nice and reflective, you know, quite a classy uh, kind of feel to it. So the reflections you see um, aren't just the, uh, 
uh, aren't just the, the the crystal but it's also like a, a shiny uh, uh, finish to the dial which is which is pretty nice I do like that very simple in uh, other respects and in, in that the printing we've just got the logo automatic and then a very thin uh, mini track around the outside the uh, hour markers I do like to see uh, applied hour markers and here we have uh, a nice uh, 12 in Roman numerals and then double batons uh, at the other corners and then just single batons everywhere else perhaps it could have been a little bit thicker but um you know because if it was a tiny bit thicker it would have probably seemed a even better quality but again you know it's keeping in mind the price really so in this respect it's impressive that we've got any sort of applied uh, hour markers that's a nice touch we have a uh, cool dauphine hands as well which are pitched uh, again nicely made nicely applied it's quite surprising uh, really on a watch costing this much to have uh, you know such good uh, applied uh, elements on the on the dial uh, and I do like this little almost like a, a teardrop as a counterweight nice uh, subtle little uh, um, element there which has a little bit of design thought behind it so that's that's a nice little touch I do like the uh, uh, date window as well so if I just move the hands out the way you can see it's a, a very uh, well executed um, rose gold uh, border to it uh, which is quite intricate you know considering the size and again on a, on a watch of this price it's a, it's a nice touch to have a lot of thoughts being put behind it and a lot of effort as well um, you know, some people may complain about the, the the date wheel being white on a on a black dial, but to me, I I'm never personally that fussed about um you know about the difference. In fact, I think it makes it clearer and easier to read. But some people prefer the you know the the wheel to match um the actual dial. Um, so I mean, not, again, a watch costing this much, you're never going to get um a custom a custom date wheel, are you? So let's uh, gloss over that. So the dial in itself, very simple, very smart. I really like the look of it. I think it's, uh, despite the you know the simplicity of it, it's very well designed, uh, and it's uh, you know it catches the eye nicely because of the, uh, the like the shiny background to it. So moving on to the uh, the case, uh, very simple. Uh, it's all polished uh, and uh, rose gold plated. Uh, we have uh, quite an unusual little shape uh, crown as well, which I do like. If I can get it in focus. There we go. So it's like a very dumpy onion crown almost, but it provides some decent grip for you to wind up the movement. And it has uh, the Hastings H. Uh, can I get in, get in focus? There we go. The Hastings H. Surprisingly deeply engraved on it as well, which is a again um, a good touch because sometimes you can see like the logo laser etched and, and it doesn't look quite as good quality. So it's nice that it's been deeply engraved. So yeah, the uh, it's a push-pull crown, um, so you just literally pull it uh, and push it back in. Uh, there we go. So the case back uh, is an exhibition case back, which is nice to see. So we have the uh, watch specifics surrounding the outside of the exhibition window. Uh, so for instance, water resistance, sapphire crystal, uh, the automatic movement and just uh, the fact that it's a stainless steel. It's a screw in case back, we see the little notches. Uh, so very simple, um, you know, nicely finished like the rest of the uh, the case. Uh, it's nice that it's all completely polished, it, you know, very uh, smart and classy uh, look and feel to it. And it just gives a decent view of the, the movement. Not that a Miyota movement is particularly gorgeous or good looking, but it is, uh, you know, perfectly suitable and people do like to see the innards of the watch. I know I do, even if it's a pretty plain looking movement I'd still rather see it than than not so that's a, a nice little extra they've added there so the strap um, is a Italian calf skin leather very soft I like the the print and it's a little bit matte as well to almost counteract the uh, the the shininess of the dial which is quite nice I think if it was a patent uh, leather which was really shiny it might be a little bit too much uh, so it's nice that it's more of a matte finish to it looks really good on the wrist feels really good on the wrist as well so there we go so we have it at 20 mil at the lugs reducing down to 18 mil at the buckle um, and it's just a you know 
you don't have to break it in or anything it's quite subtle supple uh, straight out the box which is a uh, which is a great thing to uh, to be because sometimes you know a leather strap on a cheaper watch can be a bit stiff um, another great point is that you've got a, a, a comfortable um, butterfly clasp as well which is very easy to adjust so there we go and then it shuts like so and then you can release it with these two tabs uh, on the side so you can just adjust it by just opening that the bottom flap there and then you can literally just slide in your strap and push it back up on the uh, the spot you want it to be so you know um, I do like a good butterfly clasp and this is certainly uh, a very decent one it's rose gold plated to match the case as well the color is exactly the same uh, if I just try and put it back on and then on the main bar we have uh, Hastings & Co again surprisingly deeply engraved so that's uh, another great plus okay so um, so far so good I think it's a it's a great watch for the for the money uh, so far and let's have a look at it in closer detail uh, you know to see if it holds up well uh, under a macro lens Okay, so here we have the. Oh, let me just move the hand out of the way. Here we have the printing on the dial. So you know, it could probably be a little bit finer, but I do like the uh, the way that uh, the the font that's been chosen is uh, on the logo is quite a, a you know quite a classy uh, serif script type. And then the oh, if I just give the sorry, I'll give it a quick wipe. Then we have the minute track around the outside. Very simple, just uh, straight, uh, straight printed mark dashes. There. Looking at the hands, here we have the Dauphine shape and the pitch. You can see the pitch. Seconds hand as well, just a straight point. And then here's the date window. As you can see, the border around it is pretty, uh, pretty nicely done. And then we have these batons, which actually aren't interestingly these uh, single batons aren't just a straight baton; they taper very slightly, which is something you you probably wouldn't notice, but I. I think it's a, a nice little design touch here. You can see it's thicker at the base than at the top. Uh, again, pretty classy, um, and uh, you know something that I probably would have thought of, had to think about um, to get just right. So that's a, that's an interesting little point there. So on these um, uh, like double batons uh, and also this uh, this twelve, I think it could probably do with being a tiny bit thicker, but. There you go, that's just me being very picky. Okay, moving on to the case. Here's the uh, the H deeply engraved on the case, uh, on the crown. If I just pull it out. There we have it. That, that like onion shape. Just push it back in. And then have this edging with a nice like beveled edge goes down to the lugs it's all quite shapely actually the um, uh, the case let me just give it a quick wipe on this side so there we go you know the finishing is all pretty pretty good so just moving on to the case back here's the specifics Again, surprisingly deeply engraved. And then we have the movement. I won't go into too much detail on this 9015 because you know it might not be the one that, that comes with the watch in the long term. 
but there we go. Okay, so moving on to the strap, here's the here's the top. You can see it's uh, like that matte finish to it with some matching black stitching. And then the underside, we have Hastings and Co printed on it. It's a, a nice soft underside to it as well. And then finally, if we just have a look at the, give it a quick wipe down. There's the uh, inscription of the logo on the, uh, the the top of the butterfly clasp. So that's a, a nice, looks nice under the um, under the macro lens. Okay, so there we go. So. Um, I personally think it's pretty amazing value for money uh, for the the Kickstarter value. 130 pounds, you know, you couldn't get a, an automatic watch, uh, you know, for for that price from many uh, manufacturers out there. The only ones I can really think of are Chinese-made ones, such as um, uh, Perpetual or just like a Parnis, for instance. Um, so to have a, a Canadian watch brand offer a watch at that price even the you know the the normal uh price of 160 pounds is still very good that's 320 canadian dollars or 230 uh, us dollars approximately i think it's a excellent value for money i think it looks great it feels really good on the wrist i've certainly had a few comments uh, on it as well to say that it's um you know decent looking uh, timepiece uh, and for the price you know you can't go wrong with it at all so if you're looking for a decent smart uh watch i've, I've particularly like this combination as well black with the rose gold I think it looks really really smart so if you're looking for a decent automatic uh, in this kind of combo uh, from a from a nice um, Canadian brand you know to, to support someone a bit different then I'd highly recommend the Hastings and Co Heritage I think they've done a great job with this uh, automatic watch uh, and for the price you know you really can't knock it at all so this was the Hastings and Co Heritage and that's what you're all about <laughs>